Okay, hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the three wetland hydro or the three criteria that we need for wetlands according to the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, so take a moment to think about what those three criteria are. And if you need to, you can pause the video to think about that. Okay, so the three criteria that we need to have a wetland according to the Army Corps of Engineers. First, hydrology. We then need hydrophytic vegetation or vegetation that will occur in wetlands mostly. And the third one is hydric soils. I mentioned hydrology first, even though it actually comes last on the data form uh, for wetland delineation, because hydrology drives the development of hydric soils and hydrophytic vegetation. Without, the, without water, you really can't have hydric soils or hydrophytic vegetation. And if you remember correctly from the, the lecture recording, I asked you, is hydrology simply the presence of water? So again, if you need to, you can pause the video and think about that, and I'll pause for a few uh, seconds so that you can think about it also. So, the answer to that question is no, you do not need to have water present in order to have uh, hydrology in wetlands. All we need for hydrology in wetlands is that water is present for a certain, certain portion of the growing season, according to the Army Corps of Engineers. So instead of sitting out in wetlands or coming out to wetlands and trying to see if water is present throughout the year or for a certain uh, amount of time throughout the year, we instead look for indicators of hydrology. So on the wetland delineation data form, we have on the back side, so th this is the front side, and then on the back side is the hydrology portion. And you can see that there, the indicators of hydrology are listed on the data form. So first, what I want to do, I'm at my site, one of my sampling points. Before I do anything else, and I've sort of cleared out a little sampling area to make it a little bit easier uh, to do what we need to do, but the first thing that I want to do is look around and see, do I see any of those indicators of hydrology in my sampling area? Uh, before I do uh, dig a hole or do anything else to look for indicators of hydrology. So the first thing that I see is right nearby, there's surface water. It's not where at my sampling site, I actually selected a sampling site that doesn't have surface water for a good reason, but there is surface water nearby. So we have a primary indicator of hydrology. Um, you can also search around on the ground for things like algal mats and aquatic macroinvertebrates and look for aquatic invertebrates in the soil. I don't see any like Use, uh, a lot of times you'll see like snail shells in our flat wetland, um, but I'm not seeing any of them right now. I bet if we went over to that water, we would find them. Uh, I'm not seeing them right now. Okay, so even though we have surface water nearby, there's a couple others that we can look for. And to do that, we actually dig a soil pit, which we have to do anyway to look for hyd uh, hydric soils, but we can also dig a soil pit to look for indicators of hydrology. So I'm just going to quickly dig a soil pit here. And I'm just going around in a circle with my sharpshooter uh, shovel, digging a nice hole that I'll be able to see down into. And I don't know if you can hear or not, but I'm getting some slurping noise. Uh oh, there we go. Okay, I think I have my hole, and now I just need to pull up the soil without breaking the shovel. Okay, perfect. This is what I wanted to see. Okay. So, there's a nice hole. Now, uh, 
once I dig my hole, I can see that I actually have soil saturation to nearly to the surface of the soil. It's only about an inch down. So if I take or if I take a little chunk of the soil here and put it in my hand, if you remember and shake it in your hands like this, you can get a little bit of glistening that you can see in the soil. And that's how you can tell if the soil is saturated. So this soil is saturated because it glistens when you shake it in your hands. Um, on the data sheet, you do have to record that uh, with a meter stick. Um, so, like I said, it's not very far down. And I would just go down here. And it is about an inch from the this, this surface. So you would say soil saturation at one inch. Uh, or at, at, actually it's at the surface and then one inch down. I'm sorry one inch down is what we call high water table because if you look there is water in the hole Okay, so Just from observing uh, In in our sample site and nearby we have three primary indicators of uh, surface uh, of uh, hydrology we have surface water we have saturated soil and we have high water table. Others that you might observe in the flat wetland here on campus are oxidized rhizospheres, which are those uh, rust-colored channels around roots. So the roots are putting oxygen out in the soil and uh, causing rust in, or iron in the in the soil to oxidize and make a rust color. I also mentioned earlier algal mats or algal crusts and aquatic invertebrates which around here usually are things like um, uh, freshwater snails. So to summarize what we've covered in this video we talked about the three criteria that we need for uh, wetlands according to the Army Corps of Engineers. Number one, hydrology. Number two, hydrophytic vegetation. Number three, hydric soils. We also um, uh, talked that about, we look for indicators of hydrology because it doesn't make sense to sit out here and look for water all through the growing season. And then finally, the indicators of hydrology that we've observed, surface water, so, uh, soil saturation, and high water table.